Arkham Asylum was one of the best games to come out in the past decade, and I don't think I'm alone in saying that. Its open world was a joy to explore, the snappy combat was addictive, and it did a really impressive job at bringing these characters to life in a way that was very true to the comics and origins of Batman. I actually ended up going back and playing it all over again just a month ago, but honestly, I ended up feeling kind of disappointed. The movement felt slow and clunky, the puzzles were repetitive, making them a chore to get through, and the most shocking part was how bare bones the combat system was, especially for the impact it had on the genre. It genuinely hurts me to say this, because Arkham Asylum meant a lot to me, and I've always considered it to be one of my favorite games of all time. A lot of this could be due to my taste changing as I got older, but it puts into perspective how our memories and nostalgia can cloud our judgment on certain video games. Which raises an important question, what makes a game feel truly timeless? Why is it that some games feel like they never get old, and others lose popularity after a year? Why does a game like Arkham Asylum, which was awesome when it first came out, suddenly feel so dated only 10 years later? But I can go back and play Ocarina of Time, an almost 30 year old game, and still enjoy it just as much as the first time. It's it's really confusing, and I want to talk about it. By the way, if you disagree about some of this, that's totally okay. We all have our own opinions, and it's definitely not my goal to change your image of these games. Okay, before you get out your pitchforks, I know a lot of people say that graphics aren't important when viewing a game, which is totally valid, but in the context of how a game ages, I don't fully agree. I think that graphical style is one of the biggest things that will make or break a game's lifespan. Of course, you can have really groundbreaking gameplay or a moving story, but I feel like a lot of that gets cancelled out if the game doesn't hold up visually. Another game I consider to be a pioneer in the history of video games is Morrowind. The Elder Scrolls series is known for their immersive and enchanting worlds that have shaped the way that video games are made today. And personally, they hold a very special place in my heart. However, going back and playing Morrowind is kind of eye-opening at how far graphics have come. Yeah, it might have been a game changer when it first came out in 2002, but you could say that for a lot of games. Wind Waker, Super Mario Sunshine, Metroid Prime, these are all games that came out that same year, and while it's clear that they're made with the same restrictions from that era, why do they seem to look better by today's standards? Well, I think the first obvious answer is the difference in art style. While the Elder Scrolls games do have their own distinct look to them, it's still leaning towards trying to be somewhat realistic. When you compare that to what we have today, playing Morrowind or Oblivion or even Skyrim can feel a little uncanny. Compare that to the cartoony games of the early 2000s, you can see that this is a lot prettier to look at than this. It's also the reason why pixel art games are still popular today. They may be restrictive and low resolution, but they aren't trying to be something more than they're capable of. That's why it's easier to go back to a game like 1995's Chrono Trigger than it is to play 2009's Assassin's Creed 2. Realistic graphics that age well are definitely possible to create. Guitar Hero is a good example. Visually, it's grounded in the real world, but it still has a unique enough art style that gives it charm, and in my opinion, makes it stand the test of time. The OG God of War was the same way. I'm by no means saying that cartoony graphics won't age poorly too. Crash Bandicoot isn't exactly a pretty sight, nor is Donkey Kong 64 or Final Fantasy 7, but at least they aren't trying to be photorealistic at a time when that wasn't possible. Oh god, can you picture a photorealistic Crash Bandicoot? I think it's going to be interesting to see the way games age over the next 20 years. It's hard to imagine God of War Ragnarok or Red Dead Redemption 2 ever looking bad, but I guess time will tell. Now, with graphics aside, there's no argument that how a game feels to play is the biggest reason why it can stand the test of time. There is a reason why Tetris, or Counter-Strike, or Street Fighter 2 feel just as good to play today. The gaming space has been molded to become more accessible over the years. Quality of life improvements make a noticeable difference. 3D games didn't always have lock-on mechanics or a controllable camera. 
to go back to games without the features we've become so privileged to have that they're almost second nature, isn't always an easy transition. That's why although I still strongly believe Ocarina of Time is one of the best games ever made, not having full control of the camera could easily turn new players away from giving this game a fair shot. The original Tomb Raider was probably a great game back in the 90s, but playing it today is almost impossible with how clunky movement feels. GoldenEye is literally unplayable by today's standards, which is crazy for how it is basically the pioneer game for first-person shooters. So with that in mind, why does A Link to the Past or Portal feel just as good to play as when they came out? Well, I think there's a few reasons. First off is simplicity. In Super Mario, all you need is a run and jump button to play through the entire game. I can only imagine that a big chunk of development from Nintendo was focused on making these two simple mechanics feel as good as possible. And because of that, Mario's mechanics are easy to translate to modern platformers like Hollow Knight and Celeste, two games that could very well become timeless classics because of it. The other reason could be replayability. Think of a game like Binding of Isaac. It might have come out in 2011, but if anything, the player base has only grown. I have friends who have put over a thousand hours into the game and are still going because of its replayability. Every single run feels different every single time, and combined with its very simple controls, this game will probably still be popular 10 years from now. I think it's safe to say that the life cycle of a roguelike has a chance to last longer than other genres because it's a new experience every time you come back to it. Now compare that to a heavily story-driven game like The Last of Us. As much as it has left an impact on so many people who have played it, it's understandable that coming back years later won't be the same experience as the first time. You already know all the twists and turns in the story, so it probably won't have the same effect. But I think that raises an even more important question. Replayability is great, especially when you love a game so much that you never want it to end. But do all games really need to be endlessly replayable? Is it really a bad thing if a game becomes a product of its time? We see this a lot in movies. So many people told me that Citizen Kane is the best movie ever made, but when I watched it, it was boring as hell. Does it make it a bad movie? No, I mean, I'm sure it left a lasting impact on films, and it probably was the best movie for a while. Arkham Asylum was also considered to be one of the best games ever made. Me not enjoying it now doesn't change its history and impact. Although a game might not age well the way you expect it to, it doesn't discredit the effect it had on the industry. So when it comes to timeless games, the truth is that there really isn't a clear-cut way to truly make an endlessly replayable game. Only so many games are going to be remembered in the future, and honestly, it's fine if a game ages in an unexpected way. It only means that the industry is still evolving and getting better every year. I don't think every developer should focus on making their games timeless, because otherwise we would never progress and push past the boundaries. Lots of games like Morrowinds or Far Cry 3 broke those boundaries when they first came out, and even if they don't feel the same way as they did back then, they still represent an important moment in gaming history. So I'm definitely curious, what do you think are some modern games that will become timeless classics? What makes a timeless game to you? Let me know down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching and all of the support on the channel recently. It really does mean a lot to me. Subscribe if you haven't already, and yeah, hope you have a good one. Bye-bye.